So what do you think Jesus would do with $600, $1,200, stimulus check money, a paycheck, revenue from a business? He gives us some very big clues here in the Bible. What? Yes, the Bible. So let's unpack that together here in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Home Office. Happy, happy New Year 2021. And the reason why we're doing this episode and continue these episodes of Biblical Baller Breakdown, I guess that's the name of the series, is we got this feedback from you. Let's show all the comments here. People that just absolutely love our Sunday Biblical Breakdown of money from an entrepreneur perspective, from a perspective of a first generation cash flow millionaire, you have responded in an amazing way. You've encouraged us to continue to do this. So we're continuing to do these from the position, from the perspective of understanding money from a entrepreneur. So guys, I'm excited about this conversation about the parable of the sower. So if you have your Bibles with you here in Matthew 13, Jesus again is having a conversation amongst his disciples and with the people. So what always intrigued me about the Bible is how Jesus always spoke in terms of a lesson in the form of a story, which is called parables. And a lot of those parables, people are wondering, Jesus, why are you talking to people in stories and parables? Listen, I'm in layman's terms here, facts tell, but stories sell. And what Jesus is trying to sell is the path to get to heaven. What Jesus is trying to sell is the righteous way to handle about your business. So let's jump right into this parable of the sower here in Matthew 13. He's talking about a farmer. He's talking about a sower. He's out there sowing his seed. So let's read the scripture together here, Matthew 13. And let's just jump right here into verse 3. It says, A farmer went out to sow his seed, and he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell amongst the thorns, which grew up, but later choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. So what Jesus is saying is, man, go out there and sow your seed. Money is nothing more than a seed. You're making money, you have to be able to sow it back into the ground. In other words, you reinvest it, okay? So let's talk about this real quick. Number one, let's break this down. Your job, you may not be called a farmer, you may be called an entrepreneur, you may be called an engineer, you might be called you know, an athlete, you might be called a, a gymnast, you might be called a, a singer, an entertainer, whatever it is, you have a job and that job pays you money, that money is seed. You have a responsibility with that seed, your money is to sow that seed back, it's not to hoard it. You know, later on in the scripture, he talks about the deceitfulness of wealth and greed when it kicks in. But your job with money is to sow it. And a lot of times people say, I'm not sure exactly what I need to do with money. Well, you have a big reason to make a lot of money. Listen, Deuteronomy 8.18 in the Bible, that God is giving you the power to create wealth. He's not going to force you to do it. you got to want to be able to do it. But I think that's one of probably the interesting things about God. It's one of the interesting things about our higher power is that <laughs> he gave us free will. He said many things that we need to listen to, but he's not going to force us to do it. I mean, I learned long ago that I'm not God. I ain't trying to be God. I'm trying to change anybody's mind. That God job is already taken. And even if I was God, guess what? I still can't change people's minds. What's evidence of that? Well, the story about Adam and Eve, the first human beings ever created. Adam, he said to Adam and Eve, do not eat the apple. You could have an entire garden of Eden. You could have everything here. The sun even had to listen to your body temperature. That if it was too hot, the sun had to back off. The animals were named by you, the, the birds, the fish, everything had to bow down to Adam and Eve walking around in this Garden of Eden. And think about the conversation there that God had with them. Do not eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. Do not eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. And guess what they did? They ate the fruit. Of all the things they could have not had, they chose that one thing they couldn't eat, and they did it. Well, here's the thing. They weren't clear. They weren't clear in their responsibility. They weren't clear in what they were here to do. 
and you are operating as an entrepreneur. You have a job. You have a family. You have children. Your job is to have a responsibility of making money to sow that into people's lives, the people that you love and care about. Here's my question. Lots of times people don't make money. You know why? Because they're not clear about what they want to do. You know, there's a movie out there by George Clooney. It's called Up in the Air. And he was laying off people. That was his job. He was a consultant, HR. He's field training somebody next to him. And he's laying people off left and right. And he's teaching this young lady how to lay people off with grace, apparently. Anyway, one of the guys, he's laying off. He's laying them off. And one of the questions he asks him. How much did they first pay you to give up on your dreams? 27 grand a year. And when were you going to stop and come back and do what makes you happy? So a job kept him from pursuing his dream. So he wasn't clear on what he wanted to do. And I hope here in the beginning of 2021, you are clear about God has placed in your heart, in your spirit, put into your path, what he wants you to do. As I look back on my life, I look at many different things that happened. And guess what? For a large part of my life, I was not listening. I wasn't listening. I was doing this. I was doing this. I was doing this. I spent my 30s repaying back the mistakes of my 20s because I wasn't listening. So I hope that you're listening to this video and you're watching this video right now. And maybe God has it on your heart. Maybe you should pay attention to the conversation, the message of this video that you have a job to do. You have a responsibility. And in context here of this, of this parable is to sow seeds. You got to make money. In other words, a farmer doesn't have seeds. He had to acquire the seeds. In other words, he had to buy it. He had to earn it. And now he earned it. He got it. Now his job is to go out there and sow his seed. Number two, along his path of sowing the seed, he faced different types of ground. He faced potential distractions. What am I talking about? First of all, the first area that this parable talks about, he planted his seed on the path along the way. And it really didn't set. It didn't really get in the soil. It potentially is a hardened path. And along the journey, along the way, the seed never took. And guess who took the seed, though? The birds. So the sower's job, he's planting the seeds, planting the seeds, planting the seeds. Oops, they're wrong ground, wrong ground. Anyway, he kept sowing. And the birds ate it up. Now, here's what the sower didn't do. He didn't stop and say, hey, give me back my seed. Hey, give me back my seed. He wasn't chasing the birds. He wasn't chasing the distractions. Let me translate that to some fair form of practicality. Sometimes you get involved in a business, and along the way, you stumble across the wrong website. You stumble across the wrong negative person. You stumble across somebody who's been there, done that, gives you all the advice, but never been there, done that. But along the path, the birds ate you up. You make a commitment. You say, I'm going to be there. I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to show up for an appointment. And guess what? You run across the birds and you don't get there. Or you hire somebody, you recruit somebody, you train somebody, you get a customer. And along the way, they change your mind. They ask for the money back. But guess what your job is to do? Keep sowing your seeds. That is going to happen. The biggest part about many people is they try to change things. Remember in the beginning I said this conversation, I am not God. And I'm not here to change things. That job is already taken. Your job is a human being. I hope that you take this with grace. It's not to change anybody. The only person that you got to worry about changing and improving is you. And you hope that other people are influenced by your change and your seeds and your fruits of your labor that's inspiring other people. The second part, the second ground that faced along the way is the rocky ground. Here's the rocky ground. Uh, it took, it went through. And it started coming up, and it was scorched by the soil. Why? Because it didn't have any deep roots. So when people aren't clear about what they want out of life, sure, I'm excited. The emotion got me. I'm so fired up to do this. I'm making an emotional commitment. Yes, I'm going to change my life. Yes, I got this. I got that. I'm going to do this with my New Year's resolution. Finally, for one time in my life, I got a break. But the roots didn't go deep. The, the, the belief... The understanding, the understanding that you have to cultivate it. You have to deepen your skill. You have, to, it's, you have to spread your wisdom and understanding. And you say, oh, how come I'm not getting rich in 30 days? How come this isn't panning out in six months? How come this is panning out after a couple years of doing it? It's called the shallow ground. And the moment those distractions keep putting their pressure on, and they will, guess what? You get scorched. Done. You're gone. You got burnt. Third thing, the seed See if the top of ground started taking, awesome. Then started growing, and then started growing, 
It started growing. The next thing you know, it grew with it. The thorns. The thorns say, I, I see you. You're coming up. I see you. You're coming up. Oh, we can't let you come up. We can't let you outshine us. We got to give you some shade. We got to choke you out. We got to make sure you don't grow anymore. That's like a lot of people in your life, a lot of situations in your life. They see you on the rise. They see your progress. They see you growing. They see your investments start paying off. Your money starts to grow. This distracts you. You want to buy this? You want to buy that? Those are the thorns that steal your seed. Or worse, the seed starts growing and it kills it before it even has a chance to grow. It's about to get a breakthrough. It's about to bust through to the next level. And what did you do? You quit. Person watching this, you quit. Because that seed was planted along the thorns. So as you're managing your money, you're earning your income. Yes, there's things along the way that keep you from actually manifesting and growing. Guess what? That's part of the path. That's part of the journey. See, when, when you're thinking about your finances, you think that everything has to be perfect. I can't tell you one entrepreneur I've ever run into that 100% of the way every financial decision they made has been panning out the way they thought it would pan out. Along the way, the seed of their money, their finances, yes, it gets choked up. Yes, the birds swoop it up. Yes, you can find people that lie, cheat, and steal from you. Yes, along the way, you get wiser and smarter. Yes, you learn how to protect your money. You learn how to protect your seed life better. And then you run into D. Then you start planting seed on the good ground. And here's about the good ground. It starts setting. It starts growing. It starts creating in size. And guess what happens? It returns 60 times, 100 times, 30 times. That's according to Scripture. Wait, wait a minute. So the good ground returns 30, 60, 100 times. And those certain things pan out differently. The good ground doesn't mean it's all the same. Some people come into your life for a season. Awesome. They've done a job for you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you being here. Some investments come and give you a, a 5% return. Some give you a 30% return. Hey, thanks. It didn't pan out anymore. Let me replant my seed. Let me continue sowing. Money's supposed to be sown, harvested, re-sown, harvested, on and on. It just shouldn't be hoarded. We look at money and we get back to how would Jesus deal with 600 bucks, 1200 bucks? How we deal with the stimulus check? How we deal with the business revenue from a, a company and your career? is to keep that money replanted and growing. It's to keep that money cycling. Your job is to sow. You're trying to grow a business. People lie to you. People uh, doubt you. Uh, people say, I'll be there. They don't show up. Uh, I'll be a customer. Then ask for the money back. Hey, handle that with grace. That's part of the journey of your job as a sower. Keep going until you eventually find a good ground. You know, oftentimes my wife and I, we qualify for... Uh, these trips, company paid trips, they take us to places all over the world. They take us on world travel, they take us to, to Dubai, to Costa Rica. And guess what we talk about on these trips? Not only do we talk about getting better, but guess what we talk about? Babe, aren't we glad that we, we, we push through the rocky ground? Aren't we glad we pushed past the people that stabbed us in the back and lied on us and, and we forgave them and went with grace and said we continue to make success our greatest revenge? Because we're not thinking about that stuff right now. We're glad that we became better people. We're glad that our money was reinvested to creating jobs. Because that's where we're at today. Because we're making, we're creating, we're growing. And it's part of the good ground. Because the good ground, the 100 times return, the 60 times return, the 30 times return, will then outshadow and outshine the rocky ground. And outshine the path along the way. It'll outshine the crows. Because you're going to start soaring like an eagle. And guess what happens when you're an eagle? You fly at an altitude that the crows and the ravens cannot breathe at. And that's all they do. Cock, 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 cock. They can't, all they're doing is screaming at you, but they can't soar up here like you are. Last but not least, when we're talking about the parables again, you know, this parable wraps up with Jesus saying some things here. And it's really left to interpretation. He says here, this is why I speak to people in parables. They see, although they do not see. Through hearing, they do not hear or understand. What? I'm, try I'm trying to pack that down. And he continues here. Now it gets a little bit more clear. You'll ever be hearing but never understanding. You will ever be seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. And anytime you deal with money, money has a way to callous one's heart, to create some deceit, because people think there's some form of power behind it. And there is but not for the right purpose. And when I'm talking about God wants you to be rich and why God wants you to be wealthy and prosperous and happy, it's not because of the negative things that go along with it. 
He's already talking about it. But he knows that by you creating a seed, you can elevate yourself. You can manifest the good part about this conversation and show how good God's grace can be in, one, in one's life. And I'll wrap up here in verse 23. He says, but the one who received the seed that fell into good soil is a man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, six, or 30 times what was sown. And what do you think that sower will do the next season? Hoard it, just put it up in a storehouse and forget about it? A good farmer, a good sower will sell the crop, the harvest, to the marketplace and retain some to be reinvested back into the springtime to repeat the cycle all over again. So as I wrap stuff up, I want to know what your thoughts are. How are you dealing with your money? How are you handling your finances? Here's one thing I do know. When I was living paycheck to paycheck, one of the worst times of my life, I couldn't have any seed. Guess what my seed was doing? My seed, paycheck to paycheck, was stuck on the path along the way. My seed was stuck in the rocky ground. It was stuck in shell, being scorched by bills, getting scorched by uh, bad decisions. It was getting choked up by thorns, by negative people trying to take money from me. But I hope in this year, 2021, you're able to reflect upon the scripture and say, listen, my job, I should be released to say, I need to go out there and make a lot of money. Because I know what the benefit is, especially in America, where the goodness of people here saying, you know what? I've got a lot of people out there that's taking this money and not doing the best by it. They're just hoarding it and spending it and not really replanting it and not really reinvesting it. This is an opportunity for you, if you believe in God's people, to say, I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to elevate this message. I'm going to scream it from the mountaintops because I have the financial resources to do so when you follow the parable of the sower. So consider a story here in 2021 about what you're going to do and how this could be the financial breakthrough. In the last year, you worry about money for the rest of your life. And you're worried about fulfilling the purpose that you feel has been placed in your heart and your spirit. That being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your comments, questions, follow-ups. Drop them in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. If you haven't catched them already, check out this series here, The Parable of the Tales. I discuss how this Bible stories may be millions. And here, another episode here about why God wants you to be rich. That being said, guys, I'm your minor smart guy, host of the 7 Fear Squad. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.